Welcome back to LA Fish Guys, part two, the Rose Garden Anemone Tank. We're here with my friend Condi. He runs another aquarium maintenance business in the Los Angeles area by the name of Tropical Illusions. We're at one of his service customers' homes. It's a 500 gallon tank. It's a three quarter round tank and it's inhabited by well over 100 rose anemones. Here's the irony. He's going to be performing a water change, which he does weekly in the size of 50 gallons, and he's going to make the salt water right out of the faucet. Uh, big bag uh, of salt. Any particular brand? Uh, I've used Tropic Marin before. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Just uh, a lot better salt, a little costy. Tropic Marin. That's Tropic uh -huh, Marin. That's uh -huh, correct. Uh -huh. This, uh, you get your money's worth. Okay. Uh, breaks down easy, dissolves fast. Good. You know? Well, that's what really counts. And uh, that's what we look for in salts, you know. And about how big a water change would you typically do on this tank? Since I'm here every week, uh, oh, okay. You know, I practically change about 50 gallons of water every week. Every week. Okay. Uh, okay. I add trace elements, make sure the pH is fine, nitrates right. are fine, right. and... Uh, now, we were talking just a little bit ago about making up the salt water right out of the faucet, and a lot of people might think that's not necessarily the most appropriate thing, although my comment is, gosh, if you're doing 50-gallon a week water changes in a beautiful tank like this, and it's, it's, there's no problem, maybe there's no issues with the uh, faucet water. But you also made a comment about when you go to other locations here in L.A., such as Manhattan Beach. Yes, uh, correct. Certain times during our rainy seasons oh, or okay. uh, certain areas, too, they treat uh, either with chlorine uh -huh. or ammonia to kill a lot of the uh, free-floating bacteria to make the water safe. And uh, by testing the water for so many years, you tend to pick up these things when you, when you change the water and you notice a reaction on the fish. Uh, Usually fish, when you notice uh, ammonia in the water, fish uh -huh. will start gasping right. for air as if there's something wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? So th this is by trial and, trial and error. And experience. And experience, and time, correct. Time after time. You know, and so you always have to be aware of the water, smell it, make sure that, you know, that everything is fine, and uh, test it out. Okay. Before you go to your location, always test out the water. I've been coming here for, for several years, so I know the water is fine okay. here. Okay, good. You know? And you've got a hose there that looks like one of those pythons or something similar to a python. That is correct. And uh, before we get started, you always, uh, since I go to different houses and uh, I dip this into a lot of tanks, you always want to desanitize it and make sure that before I put it into this tank, uh -huh. it's, it's thoroughly clean because you could always transport other algaes or other bacteria from one tank to the okay, next. Good so point. always maintain clean equipment. Okay, there you go. So you're going to test the salinity now, yes. just to see where you're at. Just to see where I'm at. And uh, we just drop it on in. This is a highly accurate hydrometer. And which floats, floats right. in the water and then it's got a calibrated stem and depending upon how high it floats, determines the amount of salt or the density of the water. It's important to know what the salinity or density of the salt water is before we make the new salt water. And we are at... So that we can duplicate the current salt level. 22 and a half. 1022. 1022.5. This will help minimize the stress to the animals within the tank. And that's typically where you keep the salt level, on the high or on the low end? I keep it in between. 22 to 25. Okay. You don't want to keep it too high. You know, when, when you keep it too high, there's uh, possibilities of a lot of uh, parasites and other other things, you know, reproducing a lot a lot more in higher, higher salt levels. Because that's more stressful to the fish or more beneficial to the parasites? More beneficial to, to the parasites and more stress on the fish. Uh-huh, okay. You know, so we want to keep it safe. Here we go. The next step. You, ge you generally have to know the amount of salt that you need. A measuring cup is always good. I've been doing this for, for over 20 years now. And just on my second just nature. Just on a second yeah, nature, uh -huh. you know, I know how much salt to add in okay. here. Okay, okay, so, but still you always want to use the hydrometer yeah, to verify it. You always want to use the hydrometer, and after you verify the salinity, you, you use your salt. 
So we want to raise it up a little bit. Scott, the fellow with the big 500 gallon aquarium, he'll stick his finger into the water and he'll taste the water on his finger. Claims he can tell the salt level. Salt level. Yeah, right. <laughs> This is our mixing pump. A little submersible pump little there. Little submersible pump. It's uh, aqua euro or aqua something. Aqua euro. Okay. Turns over five five hundred ninety gallons per hour. So by the time we're done, this thing should be nice and clear. Okay. That's why we're going to start making the salt water now, so it can dissolve and blend the whole time while we're servicing the tank. And uh, let's go get water. So we've come to the point where those of you with weak constitutions or very defined opinions ought to sit down because we're going to make salt water and we're going to make it right out of the faucet. Little fittings and adapters, okay. Oh, okay. Slips right in. Uh-huh. There we go. Clean hands, clean environment. Make sure there's no chemicals on my hands. Especially soap. Prior or, or soap. Right. And we got action. What happened in the... It appears to be yes. Yeah. And again, that's water right out of the faucet. Untreated Los Angeles city water. It just goes to show there are many paths to success. I might be using real ocean water, and you might be using DI, reverse osmosis, purified water. Here, Condi's using faucet water, and yet look inside his tank and see how successful he is with all those anemones. Well, again, the proof is in the pudding based on uh, how exceptionally impressive uh, all the life in this tank itself is. Now, do you have any idea as to what the uh, nitrate or possibly the phosphate level in this tank would be? Uh, you can check that the last time I checked nitrates, it was... Uh, it's, it's... I don't think he's avoiding answering that question. I think he's just a little preoccupied, but we will make it a point to come back and look for those answers. I always want to make sure you scroll the pump around inside like this, make sure all the salt, that way you, know, you won't be sitting here waiting for the salt to mix right, while you're right. servicing. Help so. encourage it to dissolve. Did you ever find that if you leave the power head down there by itself, it starts spinning and begins to twist the power cord? No, this, oh. this I'll usually set. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, there you go. My experience with an unsecured power head inside a tank like this is it spun around, twisted the power cord, and eventually caused it to break. So while that's mixing and dissolving there, you're going to... Uh... Uh, get ready to pour the top down. Okay. Take all the dry food. We use dry food, cyclopses, and coral. Exclusively in this tank, it's all dry or flake food. Dry or flake food. Some frozen food. Okay. We do feed mice and uh, brine shrimp, and uh, uh, occasionally the uh, the uh, how would it the reef. It's a reef formula frozen food, which basically has everything for like tanks, butterflies, it, it has everything. Okay. You know what I mean? And that's one of the other foods that we do feed. Let's get this down. This is needed in order to finish completing your water. Right. Especially when you use it from the faucet. You know, you want to make sure you remove the chlorines, chloramine okay. and ammonia. So it's a dechlorinator of some sorts, okay? Yes. And nitrates. You always want to almost double or triple dose it to make sure that you know you eliminate all the impurities of the water. What Condi's using and referring to is referred to as a dechlorinator. It's a liquid or a chemical that helps remove the chlorine or the chloramine that the city put in the water. We need to use this when using tap water. Double or triple dosing it will not will not harm anything. Okay. Just a little bit more costly but as you can tell inside, you know, you would rather buy five of these or pour five of these, you know, to save, you know, such a beautiful piece, you know. Yes. 
as you can see, as the water's progressing, as we're standing, it's already almost to the point where it's all dissolved, yeah. That is correct. And this is what you want when you use a synthetic salt. You want something that's going to dissolve fast and it's going to be ready ready to use within an, within an hour. Some people yeah. like to let it sit for a while. You have to make sure all the elements in it are broken down before they use it in there. But the, how I do it, uh, I do a, a, a water change, which I basically call them was a acclimation style water change to where I'm adding the water and at the same time vacuuming the tank, which is not basically causing too much of a shock. A lot of people like to uh, stop their system right. and then drain water right. and add the new water. Sometimes that, that, that could cause a little bit of a shock, you know, I've seen, but usually when I do that, I do it to a tank that has high, high nitrates, high ammonia, to where I have to extract a lot of water instead of me doing what I'm gonna do right now. Right now, once this water's finished, I'm gonna do acclimation style water change. Yeah. Which means add the new water while you're taking out the old water. That is correct. So it's a gentle transition. Yeah. Okay. To service now, a tank this size, it becomes much easier if you're able to remove the top, thus giving you maximum access into the top of the tank. In this particular case, I'm here to help him, but Condi actually tells me he's able to lift this canopy off by himself. As we lift it off, we begin to notice these are LED type lights. LEDs on top of a reef slash invertebrate tank. And this is new technology. So as we mentioned, this is LED style lighting and you can see on the underside of the canopy that we've now lifted off, there's a series of strips and a cluster of LEDs. What can you tell us about this? Well, this is a new state of the art lighting that's coming out, LEDs. Um, these are made by uh, Tropic Marin. Uh, as you can see, we have the blues for the nighttime, which, which give out a, a brilliant color at night. And we have the pods. Pods are basically controlled by a controller, which basically ramps the lights according to the spectrum of light that you want to come out on each particular side. Uh, they have multi-functions. They, they have a real nice function, which basically they'll, sh they'll, they'll program themselves down you know, called the lightning strike feature in the water, which makes it seem like there's lightning strikes uh, happening inside of the tank. Interesting. And, and it does it, and it's programmed in there, it does it for about an hour, and it shuts back down, it powers the lights back up slowly to, to its back to its normal. And is that more just an aesthetic or visual thing, or is there some benefit to that to the inhabitants of the tank? The benefit of the, of the tank is, oh, for the lightning strike? Uh-huh. It's just an extra feature. So the lightning strike is just more of an aesthetic issue, kind of a flicker in the tank. That is correct. And basically what they do, they power down it. Right now they're at full spectrum. Uh -huh. They will basically power down by themselves and it'll start uh, flickering like if there's lightning here in the water. Oh, you know? interesting. And uh, we'll see that after the tank is okay. uh, nice and clean. Okay. We'll set, the t we'll set it back up and uh, we'll watch the show. Great. Okay. Well, let me help you get that big canopy out of the way. Okay. And I, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned, but uh, the new technology of LEDs, like I was telling you, the benefit of it, these bulbs last 10 years. Oh my. 10 years without, re with, without having to replace anything. If anything you might replace might be the transformer, but the, the bulbs are guaranteed for 10 years, 50,000 hours, and uh, no heat. No heat, yeah. No yeah. heat, really. Yeah. And no they're heat. much more energy efficient. This type of light system comes with these bars. Basically, they, they can mount up, they, be, they can become a, a, a basically a, like a canopy style with a... With I think the word he's looking uh, for is either universal or retrofit, meaning uh, able to adapt green, to many green, shapes or sizes or about, spaces. I don't know what the word is. A, um, oh, I don't know. But basically, you could slide these to oh, oh, oh. where basically uh -huh. you want the spectrum of, of, of the light to come out. You know, as you can see, you can oh, okay, get more of it towards the front. And you could add more. You know, this one, they were, they were mounted up top due to the space that's up there. And as you can see, we, we replaced four, uh, four 400 watt highlights to LEDs. Okay. Be sure to come on back for part three of the Rose Garden Anemone Tank. 
as Condi talks a little bit more about the benefits of using LED type lighting over such a beautiful tank and shows us actually how he begins to clean the inside of the tank.